Um, for the sake of the recording, I just want to make sure that the back there's not a whole lot of background noise. So, um, hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here. This is a um, Q and A. Um, we can be really informal about this. Kick your feet up, put your jammies on, grab you a little little tea or whatever you like to drink at night. I got my water. Make sure you always have your water. That's important. Um, and we're going to do some live Q and A. But before we do the Q and A, be thinking while I'm talking about what you'd like to ask me if you haven't already thought about a question that you want to ask and that I can help you with. Um, but, don't, but some of you might be jumping on, you might be jumping on to the live or you might be watching this recording or the replay on Instagram and you may have no idea who I am. <laughs> and you might be thinking, who is this girl and why is she even qualified to talk to me and answer my questions? Um, I just want you to know that um, I, I'm, I'm a girl just like you on my journey. I'm on my uh, faith walk, I'm on my journey to fit and um, my name is Mary, by the way. And about, oh my gosh, what, 10, 11 years ago, I found myself um, beating my head up against the wall because I just couldn't seem to figure out how to live healthy consistently. Um, I, like all of us, like most of us, I knew that I needed to move my body. Um, I exercise and I knew I needed to eat healthy foods in order to be a healthy human, but I could not wrap my head around how to do that day in and day out. I could not figure out how to keep those habits, um, going without falling off the wagon. And so I would look at other people that, that did seem to have it figured out. And I would be like, I would ask them all, I'd, I'd ask everyone, what do you, what do you do? to stay healthy all, all the time, every day. Not perfect, they weren't perfect, they weren't eating perfect and they missed workouts every now and again. But by and large, they weren't falling off the wagon like I was. And I was, I seemed to be one of those people that would do good for about three months. And I don't really know what the three month thing was all about, but I do good, I get a workout pro, you know, routine going, I start to eat healthy foods, I start to feel good. And then maybe something psychologically in my head was saying, hey, you look good, you're doing good. And I'd stop and I'd miss one workout and then one missed workout would turn into about a week's worth of missed workouts and then a week would turn into about a month and before I knew it, three months later, I had completely fallen off the wagon and I was frustrated again. And so I was trying to once again pump the well and figure out how to get it all going again, you know, and I did that for probably about 13 years of my life. Um, I wasn't raised in a healthy environment, meaning healthy food, people working out. I wasn't raised in that kind of environment. I had amazing parents, amazing upbringing. Um, but you know, we, we, we ate a lot of Mrs. Paul's fish sticks and mac and cheese. I'll just say that. Um, if you can relate, you can comment below or comment in the chat. If you're on the zoom call, uh, tell me if you can relate to that. Right. So it wasn't like I had a a model or an example um, in front of me to understand this whole healthy living thing. Then I went off to college and that was a complete disaster. <laughs> uh, I mean, a complete disaster. My first two years, I, I failed out uh, more or less. I had a 1.75 GPA. Um, I, there was drugs, there was alcohol, promiscuity. I mean, the list is, is, is long of unhealthy things that I was doing, just destroying my body. And it was, um, it, was a, it was a rough time. And I like to call those years my formative years because God saved me and he was walking with me. And I may not have known it at the time, but I know it now looking back. And while, while those years were tough um, to go through and to get out of, I don't wish them away. I don't wish they never happened because I very much believe that, that God used me in that mess <laughs> to help me be the person that I am today and help me be strong uh, and help me really to appreciate um, and be passionate about being as healthy as I can be. But more, more than just me being healthy for me is then me turning around and utilizing the gifts that God gave me and the story that he gave me and the calling to help you to do the same. And so I know that my struggles aren't unique. I know other people uh, also went through stormy times and, and really dark years, you know, and praise God. I hope you made it out the other side. Like I did with blessings. Um, some people might be in the middle of that storm right now. 
you know, listening to my voice. And so um, I just want you to know that there is hope. Let me be um, the vision of hope for you that, um, you know, going through a rough time, you, you know, as long as you've got God with you, which I did, um, we'll make it to the other side, make it to the other side. And if you're struggling with all this yo-yo mess and, you know, you feel like you do good for a little bit with your healthy habits and then you fall off the wagon as well, just know you're not alone. A lot of people go through all of that. But what I want you to know, and that's what I'm getting ready to talk about here tonight, is that if I, I, I'm not any more special than you, um, I'm just a girl. I was just, a, I'm just a girl who's gone through a journey of life. If I can figure out the solution and somebody showed it to me and shared it with me, and I'm going to share it with you, if I can change things and turn the ship around, you can too, truly. Um, I know I'm special because I'm God's favorite and all of that. Um, but what I mean is that I'm, I'm not any more special than you, truly. Um, we're all here together as humans, children of God. And so um, again, if I can do this, so can you. So let, let that give you hope. Hope is a great thing to have. Um, and it, it can fuel you to know that um, you, can, you can do it. You can make the changes you need to make and feel better than you've ever felt in your life. And I can tell you at 48 years old that I do feel better than I've ever felt in my life. I'm not just saying that to you. That's truly how I feel. I feel better physically. I feel better spiritually. I feel, feel better emotionally. Life is not perfect. I have my set of challenges. We all do. Um, but when you have strong foundation in, in those areas of your life, then you can get through the challenging times and you can get to the other side. So um, that's just a little bit about me. Also, a little bit of my background. The other thing to know is that I am not a professional um, I'm not a, in the wellness field. I'm not a professional. I don't have any letters specifically after my name, um, credentials. I'm not a, I'm not a registered dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I don't have a PhD in nutrition. Um, I, I did personal training, uh, training at one point in time in my life, but I am not currently an active personal trainer. Um, I know uh, enough to be dangerous is really what it's all about, but what I do and that's what, that's what makes what I do very different is I help you to stay on the wagon. I am your accountability partner and that is the difference, right? So while I have the knowledge to help you from a nutrition perspective and from a um, physiological perspective, simply from experience, my own experience with my own body, as well as all the thousands of people that I've coached, um, I just want to make sure you know that I am not a professional nutritionist or, uh, you know, like I said, personal trainer or anything like that. Don't have to be to do the business that I do. And that's one of the things that I love so much about it is because, because again, I really do feel like this is my calling. Um, I spent about 23 years in corporate America. I graduated college. I did graduate in four years after all that mess with a degree in health administration. And I ran nursing homes, skilled nursing and rehab facilities for about 13 years. Um, and I was the administrator of the building. And so I took care of the greatest generation. Uh, and that was a really cool, cool time in my life. Stressful, but cool. Uh, and then I ventured a kind of a God thing, but I ventured in, into faux painting. And I had my own faux painting business for about two years until the economy tanked and no one could afford it anymore. And then I actually was randomly, not so, because I think it was a God thing, I was asked to run a gym and manage a gym. And I did that for about two years. And again, that I feel like was God's way of entering me into the wellness field, entering me into health and fitness, right? And, and I was on the health, health side. I was on the other side of <laughs> the health field, if you will, taking care of people who were already sick and needed to be treated. And now here I am on the wellness side, trying to prevent that, right? Trying to make sure we stay healthy so we don't have to be in a place like that for rehab. Um, and so, yeah, I ran this gym for two years and, uh, and then I went back into corporate America and now here I am, I'm a full-time health and wellness coach. Um, I have my own business and that's what you see. If you follow me on social, that's what you see me doing. Um, but the little bit of time, the two years that I was managing that gym, I hired a personal trainer. I hired one of our personal trainers at the gym. She was the Jillian Michaels of the trainers. She was the one that kicked everyone's butt hardcore on the gym floor. Um, she, she was drill instructor ish, right? In a kind way. I loved her. Her name was Leanne. 
and uh, and I paid her seventy five dollars an hour, about two to three times a week, and she, you know, smashed me all over the gym floor. Everything she told me to do, I did. I was determined I was going to be a healthy human. Um, here I was working at a gym. There was no excuses. I could figure this out. And uh, and for about a year and a half in, she's still training me, and I'm still doing everything she told me to do, and I am still sitting in this zone of not healthy. Uh, I, I was, if you looked at me, you would have said, oh, but you looked great. Well, I was kind of skinny fat. Have you ever heard that? Skinny fat. So I, I, I had 15 pounds more on my body than I have right now, um, but my body fat was really high. Uh, and it wasn't where it needed to be to be healthy, right? And I didn't feel so great. I, and that was more than anything. I didn't, I didn't have the ener energy like I have now. And again, that's all. This is 11 years ago. It was 2008. It was July of 2008. I remember it very specifically because that weekend was going to be July 4th weekend, and we spend July 4th weekend at the beach all weekend at the beach with a whole bunch of friends because it's the um, boat races here in Florida. And I knew I was going to be in bathing suit all weekend long, and I was pretty down about it. And so she saw that in me, and she told me to sit down, put the weights down, and she said, what's wrong? And I welled up with tears. And I said, I am so sick of working so hard for you, um, for me, but like doing everything you tell me to do, why can't I get this weight off, Leanne? Why can't I get to where I want to be and reach my goals? And she said, um, I want you to do something. And you're not going to want to do it, but I really, I really want you to consider this system. My husband's doing it and he is seeing amazing results. And it's, it's the whole package, Mary. It's nutrition plus fitness, plus a ton of support and accountability. And that's really what I feel like is going to be the formula for you. You need the nutrition piece. You don't have to eat perfect, but you need to figure out how to eat healthy in moderation. And I believe this is going to be the right thing for you. And I did not want to do it. I, it was home-based workouts. I said, I, I said, Jane Fonda thing. Why do I need that when I have you? Um, and then I looked at her kind of weird and cock, did the, the dog cock your head thing. And I said, Leanne, if I do this home-based thing you want me to do, you're going to lose me as a client. I don't understand why you want me to do this because I'm clearly not going to hire you to train me on the gym floor if I'm doing my workouts at home. And she said, I know that. She wasn't a coach like I am. She said, I know that. I just know it's going to work, and I love and care about you, and I really want you to give it 30 days. Will you give it 30 days, Mary, and if it doesn't work, you can come back here and hire me. I said, okay. Well, I just want you to know that I haven't stepped foot in the gym to do my workout since that day. That was July of 2008, so that was 11 years ago. It worked, and I'm so grateful to God that Leanne was brought into my life, not by accident, that she presented me with that solution to a problem that I had. And it was the solution for me. It was the right solution for me. It finally, finally, finally gave me um, a forever plan, something that wasn't a temporary diet, something that wasn't so restricted that I couldn't live my life. It gave me a, for, a forever plan. And so here I am 11 years later. It doesn't mean life is perfect. I've missed workouts, but I've never missed more than like one or two without getting myself right back on course. Um, I clearly eat my pizza, have a glass of wine. I enjoy those kinds of things. I just don't do it every day, right? So it was all about me finding moderation in my lifestyle so that, that it was sustainable forever because that's what we need. Because here's the thing. When you work with me, I'm not interested in working with you for 30 days or 60 days or 100 days or whatever because what are you going to do when that's over? <laughs> Go right back to what you were doing before. When people work with me, when you work with me, you work with me forever. Um, I know that's probably scary and you're like, wow, that's a lot of Mary. But I'm just here to say that I'm not interested in giving you a temporary fix because that I did too many of those myself. I'm interested in showing you a forever plan and, and you're with me forever if you want to be. If you don't want to be, you don't have to be, but I certainly want you to be, right? Because I know that um, this can change you the way it's changed me. There are people that I work with who have been with me for, they're brand new, right? Just got started a week or two ago. And then I have people who've been with me five, six, seven years that have remained on the wagon, consistent with their healthy habits. And we have a group we call Faithfully Fit. And that's our accountability group. And that's our family, truly family. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I, I, like I said, I did make my way back into corporate America after the gym. Um, and then I was introduced to this business um, which was part of that system that I had, that had personally changed my life. I didn't realize there was a business attached to it 
four years later in 2012 is when I found out that this amazing change in my life, all this system that I was doing that had changed my life, just completely changed my life personally, now had an opportunity to change my life professionally. And so in 2012, I started the business. I, I built the business part-time for about three years uh, while I was still in corporate America. I did it on my lunch break and in the evenings, um, helping people like I'm talking to you. And then uh, in 2015, I decided to exit corporate America, say bye-bye, and uh, now I do this full-time. And it is truly, truly my... It is truly my passion. It is truly my purpose. I know it is. God's made that very clear. So that's a little bit about me. I just want to, let me get my dogs to be quiet. Max, come here, baby. Max is always the one that barks. Maggie, she just barks because he barks. Um, so here's the thing, uh, and I'm going to open up for Q&A, but let's go back to what my issue was. So it all really goes back to choices and habits, right? Everything in life is about choices and, and those choices. Um, fall into like what what are our habits because our habits slash choices define who we are it defines our success you know do we have healthy habits do we are do we surround ourselves with healthy people um do we make the right choices or do we not you know and that just determines the path that we're on so i really want to make sure um that before we end this call that i talk to you a little bit about i want to give you some tools and resources to help you with building your healthy habits um, because one of the things that is important for you to know about me is I don't really like a rah-rah session. I think we're all motivated just fine. Remember, motivation comes from within. I can encourage you and I can inspire you all day long, but I don't really think that's why you want to jump on this call. Uh, it might be part of it, but I want to give you practical, applicable things that you can walk away with that's, that you can start right away. To make a change in your life and so I don't want this call to end without us doing that um, so I've got these notes over here and at some point I may um, stop us and make sure that I hit those notes but I do want to open up I do want to ask you what questions you have that's what this call is all about so if you're on Instagram just pop your questions in the comments if you're here on zoom I am going to unmute everyone and you can um, just chime in so give me one second okay so everyone is unmuted um, Joanne, let me just throw it out there. Do you have any questions that you had wanted to ask me? Well, I'm just, I need more motivation. Okay. I've so got to get me... motivated because I'm, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I got a, my daughter and her husband live with us and they're three children and I work. So it's busy. Yes. Okay, so let me address that um, because I'm, I'm actually just going to mute everybody again just to make sure that the there's no background noise when I answer the question. Then I'll unmute you again, Joanne. Um, don't, don't take offense to my answers. Just understand that I don't do anybody any good if, if the call is all about fluff and it's not about me being honest and real with you, okay? So we're all busy. We really are. There are very few people that you meet in life or you talk to or you run into that aren't busy, okay? So here's, here's the thing to keep in mind. And again, this is just me being super honest and real and truthful with you. Um, busy can get in your way and it can cloud your, cl cloud your head and cloud your choices. What it really boils down to is how do you choose to spend your time? So when, when, we're, when someone says to me they're, they're too busy, too busy to take care of themselves because they have all these things going on. What I would suggest that you do is take pen and paper because everything looks different when you write it down, right? It becomes really, really black and white and tangible when you write it down. So I would suggest you take pen and paper and literally write down your typical day. From the minute your eyeballs open, what time is that? Uh, what do you do next? What do you do after that? After that, after that, after that. And if you don't really know and, and, and each day is different, then just tomorrow, take a piece of paper and write out tomorrow what tomorrow looks like, all the way from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. And then you're really just gonna take a look at what, what, where are you spending your time? And are you spending your time in the areas that are a priority for your life? 
So you mentioned that you have your daughter living there and, um, and, the, and the children and there's a lot going on. And I get that. Um, but then I would, I would say, okay, well, you know, and I don't know if you work or, or not, Joanne, but I'd say, you know, what time do you have to be at work? Um, what time does everybody in the house wake up? Because you can always get up before everyone else so that you don't get interrupted. So that their craziness and their busyness doesn't have any effect on what you're doing. You know, so again, maybe you're already getting up at four in the morning. I don't really know what that looks like. You're going to have to write that down and figure that out. But then I would also say, as you go through and look at what you did and where you prioritized your time, um, there's a couple things you're going to ask yourself. Number one, are the things that I did today, are they the priorities in my life? So let's say, for example, that you got up, you, you took a shower, you did your thing, you made your way to work. I'm just saying this to, uh, as an example. Um, you came home from work, you started make, you made dinner, sat around the table, everybody ate dinner, um, and then there was some laundry you needed to do, and there was you know, maybe a television show you like to watch or whatever, and then whatever time you went to bed. So essentially what you did and what you chose to do were the things that you felt like were the most important. And if that answer to that question is, well, not really, they were things that I did that had to get done, but they weren't necessarily the most important. They weren't all my priorities. Then you can take a look and say, well, how can I shuffle things around a little bit? You know, do you need to do laundry every single night? Maybe you, you make yourself more efficient and you consolidate and you do laundry one or two days a week keep that set in stone, create that habit, and then you've now opened up some other time in the, in the rest of the week. Maybe um, you're cooking a different meal every single solitary night, which is taking time. Why not adapt uh, a, what I call now and later, the people that I coach know, know that word, now and later is simply, and I will tell you this, I used to do meal prep Sundays, and there is nothing wrong with meal prep Sundays so that you can have good, healthy grab and go, we really need to have healthy grab and go available. Otherwise, we grab the stuff that is quick because we're hungry. So we put our hand in a bag of potato chips, right? Put our hand in, in, in a box of crackers, whatever that looks like, because we're hungry. But if we have healthy food that is that quick for us to grab, that's why I call it healthy grab and go, um, then, we're, then we have a healthier choice besides the bag of potato chips or the things that aren't so healthy. Well. Doing a meal prep Sunday is a great way to have healthy grab and go on hand. But I used to hate it. I hated standing in the kitchen for a few hours on a Sunday. I just didn't feel like doing that. And one day, all of a sudden, I thought to myself, wait a minute, why don't I just cook extra servings every single time I cook a meal so that I don't have to cook every single solitary day and I have healthy grab and go available? So, for example, tonight we had salmon asparagus and salad for dinner. My mom happened to be here, so there were three of us, but on a typical night, it's usually just my husband and I. Well, tonight, there were three of us eating. I did not just make three salmon fillets, three servings of asparagus, and three servings of a salad. I made five salmon fillets, five servings of asparagus, and we always keep what I call a salad bowl um, in the refrigerator. And it's all of the things that go into a salad that we like that aren't wet, like anything but the tomatoes and the cucumbers and things that'll make a so salad soggy. So I keep that bowl full of greens and carrots and things like that already cut up with a paper towel on top because that absorbs the moisture. And I keep it in the bottom bin in the refrigerator. So I have, we have salad always, always, always in the bottom bin, ready to go, put in a bowl, throw some dressing on it, and we have a salad. But my point behind going back to the salmon and the asparagus is, why did I make five servings? There was only three of us eating. Because now in my refrigerator right now, there's two servings of salmon, two servings of asparagus, and of course my salad bowl. So guess what? Tomorrow's lunch will be, or tomorrow's dinner salmon and asparagus. So the point is that I don't have to cook all the meals all week long. Does that make sense? Um, if I, if you double up, excuse me while I get rid of a creeper, there we go. Um, if you cook and you do now and later and you have these extra meals that are put together, um, then you save yourself some time. So I'm not trying to, to um, be disrespectful, Joanne, but 
we all are very, very busy. It's just a matter of how are we utilizing that time and what choices are we making? Uh, and then let me address the other thing you mentioned was about the motivation. Um, remember I said at the beginning of the call that you, I can't give you motivation. No person can give you motivation or no thing is going to motivate you. The motivation comes from within us. Okay. So I can inspire you and I can encourage you, but you've got to be motivated. And so when you first start working with me, one of the first questions I ask, matter of fact, I ask it before we even officially start working together. Um, if you, if you, if anybody on here has filled out the questionnaire that I send you via email, it has a question in there that says, why, why do you want to reach your goals? So I ask you, what are your fitness goals? And then the very next question is, why do you want to reach those goals? Why do you want to achieve those goals? So let's say, for example, your goal is to lose weight. And I'm going to ask you, why do you want to lose weight? And I, I don't accept the answer because I want to be healthy. Because that's not been strong enough to keep you committed, right? That's not motivating enough, as you said, to keep you committed to doing the work that needs to be done to be a healthy human. So what I'm looking for is how is losing weight going to make you feel? And if we start thinking about how we're going to feel, that is incredibly powerful. Sometimes people send me a why statement about how reaching their goals is going to make them feel. That is so powerful that I know they're crying. I'm practically crying reading it. Okay. It may be that they lost a parent to a disease that they're, parent has that they now have and they do not want to leave their children without a parent too soon you know it may be that they almost lost their life you know because of some awful accident and they just really are determined to be strong and feel their best for the rest of their life it could be whatever it looks like whatever that is for you it doesn't have to be that deep but it definitely needs to be how are you going how is being healthy how is reaching your goals going to make you feel and the other piece of this motivation that you feel like you're lacking, Joanne, and I'm not faulting you because I was too, is we have to surround ourselves with people that are on this journey with us. When we try to do it by ourselves and we don't have people that notice and care when we're not showing up, we don't have that level of accountability, then that's when we continue to yo-yo. And we continue to fall off the wagon. So all those 13 years that I did that, where I kept doing good and then falling off the wagon and then doing good again, I didn't have any accountability. I didn't have any accountability partner. I wasn't in an accountability group. There was no one that noticed or cared if I made the right food choices. There was no one who noticed or cared if I didn't work out that day. Now listen, they may have noticed but they, and they may have cared, but they didn't say anything. So for example, I have people that say to me, um, I don't need an accountability partner because my spouse is my accountability partner. <laughs> I'm already laughing. That's funny. Our spouses are not our accountability partners. And let me explain to you why. We love our spouses. They love us. And there, there's, we're in too intimate of a relationship with this person so what happens is that person becomes your cheerleader. That person becomes your enabler. And as long as things are going well, then that person as your accountability partner is cheering you on. That sounds great, doesn't it? They're an accountability partner. They're cheering me on. But what happens when you don't make the right food choice? What happens when you do miss several workouts in a row? Months now are going by and you're not eating healthy and you're not working out. Is this wonderful spouse of yours? saying to you what happened you're not doing what you said you were going to do no you know why because they love us too much to hurt us and so what they usually say is i love I, you look great just the way you are you're beautiful just the way you are and guess what that is true they feel that way and we feel that way about them it but but at the end of the day regardless if you're beautiful just the way you are and they love us just the way we are, we still have these goals. We still wanna have more energy. We still wanna be able to play with our grandkids. We still wanna have no limitations on our life. We still wanna lose the weight. 
We still want to do these things that we said we wanted to do, even though our husbands still love us, right? Does that make sense? So we have to have someone who lovingly and respectfully notices and cares when we don't show up to do the work. And they tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, are you okay? What's going on? How can I help? And they pick us up by our bootstraps and they get us back to work, right? That is a true accountability partner. That's what I do. And that is what, where that whole motivation piece that you mentioned, Joanne, comes into play is that you aren't, you don't, you're not looking for someone to motivate you. You're looking for accountability so that you stay and stick to your habits. Is that correct? Did I help to answer that question for you? Joanne? Yep, that's that for helpful? sure. Okay. Um, yes, yes. Okay, what other questions do you have? Oh, oh, am I speaking now? You are. Oh, oh, my phone just died, so that's why I went off a bit. If you don't have any other questions, that's okay, or I can circle oh. back to you. I just want to make sure I'm answering the questions you had. I'm good. Well, I'm, I just want, I do need to apologize for being uh, lazy this week. Ah, maybe, I'll, no. maybe I'll do better. You don't have to apologize. Um, don't apologize. Oh. Don't apologize at all. Um, Marsha, let me go to you. Do you have, what questions do you have? Uh, Mary, I just really got on the app today. So I haven't even looked around, looked at, um, programs or anything, downloaded videos or nothing at this point. So tomorrow oh. I start. Oh no, I'm not asking if you have questions about anything related to the group. I was just in general about your goals or nutrition, um, just in general. Um, in general, I, I just, I um, have beginning osteoporosis because I have a Hashimoto's disease. And so I'm taking calcium and I need to exercise. Yeah. I need to exercise not just for that, but just for my overall energy level and things like that. And I'm the same way. I get on the wagon and then off the wagon, on and off, on and off. I don't want to keep doing the yo-yo. It's maddening, isn't it? It is. Maddening. Well, let me um, address a few things and thank you for um, chiming in. Um, Osseo. So, hold on one second. Yes, okay. Um, osteoporosis. So I have a history of osteo as well in my family. My mother has osteoporosis. She takes medication for it. I, at one point in time in my life was, um, osteopenia. So I was coming in, I was making my way right on in, uh, to osteoporosis. And I, um, I, all, I do have arthritis as well in, in my body, which is hereditary from my mom. God bless her. Uh, and you're absolutely right. One of the most important, and a lot of women, um, are prone to osteoporosis as we've as you probably know. Um, so, and one of the most important things we can do, which is what you said, is to put resistance against our muscles. And people don't understand the correlation between um, our muscles and our bones. It seems weird. They're two totally different things and, and, they, and they live and reside side by side. Um, but, but what we all know, or if you don't know and you're listening, um, let me explain to you, is that when we strengthen our muscles, we actually strengthen our bones. And so that's why folks um, like Marsha and myself who are prone to osteo or have osteoporosis are told you've got to do resistance training. Resistance training being with weights or resistance bands, or it could even be your own body weight. So like doing a push up um, or things like that, that is a resistance training because you're utilizing all the weight of your body to push your body up and down, pull-ups, things like that. But it doesn't have to be that complicated. There's lots of different weight training or resistance training type of workouts that you can do that will help to strengthen your muscles, which helps to strengthen your bones. Um, and it's funny because, uh, not funny, but my big why, people ask me all the time, well, what's your why, Mary? Um, my why is, it, it's two words, no limitations no limitations. And let me tell you where it comes from. And I, and I mean, no disrespect to, to my mother. Um, but my mom has, 
challenges physically. She, as I said, she has osteoporosis, she has arthritis, um, she has had some back problems, some disc degenerative disease. Um, she's fra had fractured pelvis. She had six fractures in her pelvis at one point in time a few years ago. I, I believe, we believe, they don't know, there was no injury or fall, but they believe from the osteo, right? Just having these weak, brittle, brittle bones. And I have watched my mother, my mother is 73 years young, and I have, or 72, excuse me, years young, and I've watched her not be able to do things that she wants to do because she's afraid or because she's not strong enough um, or because she's, you know, she's afraid she's going to hurt herself or she physically can't because um, she didn't live a life strengthening her body. Uh, she, she did a little bit. Mom walks, mom loves to walk, but it wasn't like she, you know, was doing a whole lot of resistance training or things like that. Now she is now incorporating a lot of that stuff into her life as best she can so that she can <laughs> really try to help her body that is uh, brittle. But I see this happening to her and I know I'm prone to osteo because I was tested and I'm on, and I was osteopenia. But by the way, I'm no longer in that zone anymore. I'm in the healthy zone. I was able to reverse that in my body by getting healthier over these years. Praise God. Um, but I also have the arthritis like my mom has as well. So I see that I have a lot of her DNA and it, to be perfectly frank, it scares the shit out of me. I, I do, I want to be 80, 90 years old and be, and someone say to me, let's go hiking or let's go for a bike ride or let's go whatever. I, I want to be able to do that desperately. I don't want to have to say no. So that is my why. Um, and so, yes, Marsha, you're absolutely right. Getting into a program where you're putting resistance against your muscle so you can not only build your muscle strong and have lean muscle in your body, but you can also keep your bones strong or get your bones even stronger than they are right now. And then nutrition plays a huge role, um, as you know, in, in that as well, making sure that we have the right dense nutrients going into our body so that we can keep our bones and our um, muscles and our body as strong as, as humanly possible. The, the thing that I really, I know I'm going to say this a couple of times, but it's always worth repeating, is um, I do not eat perfect. That was that was the thing that really tripped me up for so many years while I was yo-yoing is I felt like the only way I could be healthy is if everything was perfect, if my nutrition was perfect, if the plate was perfect, right? And uh, that's not sustainable for life. It's just not. So people then say to me all the time, well, how healthy do you eat? For me, and this is because I make this choice, not because I feel like I have to, but the, the, the more you start to eat healthy, all through the years, the more you find really amazingly delicious, healthy foods. And those are the ones you want because those are the ones, you know, um, if I eat this, my belly's not going to hurt. If I eat this, I'm going to feel good. And I'm just going to have a lot of energy and I'm not going to feel sluggish. So over the course of years, when you start to eat healthier, you start to make those choices, not because you feel like you have to, but because you want to. So I eat healthy probably about 90 to 95% of the time. Um, my, my week, I'm a very OCD, very regimented person. So during the week, it's not a problem. There's, I have very, I'm very um, much a creature of habit and I'm in routine and I like certain things during the week. And then on Friday and Saturday night, my husband and I go out to dinner and I don't have any restrictions in my mind. I say to myself, open the menu and choose what you want. And, uh, and my gosh, choose what you want. I've done so well all week long, right? But here's the thing. Now, not always do I choose the worst thing on the menu from a health perspective, because again, I don't necessarily want to wake up the next day and feel sluggish or feel like crap. So sometimes I do. Sometimes it's pizza Friday. Oh my gosh. And sometimes I choose the salmon uh, salad or whatever, because it's one of my favorite things on the menu. So you do, you start to figure all of that out, but you, you, we definitely have to have moderation. I enjoy a glass of wine on a Friday and Saturday night. I mean, those are just things, those are just choices that, that I make that um, I feel like are okay for me. But yeah, and, and I, I think the thing that's refreshing, um, Marsha, is that what I have found over the years is that, again, the, the more intrinsic this all becomes, the easier it becomes. So, you know, everybody has temptations, but I just don't have them as much anymore. And I don't have cravings as much anymore because the foods that I'm feeding my body, it, it 
take some of that away. So you, you just, you don't have to fight that temptation like every single day, you know, does that make sense? Um, is there, did that help a little bit, Marsha, or do you have any other questions about? Yeah, it did. It did. And is I that on one the of the right areas? What, what area, I guess, let me ask you a question. What area do you feel like um, you struggle the most with? Finding um, time or, or ways to move your body and work out, or is it more the nutrition side? Um, probably the exercise part. Exercise. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good on the food. Good, good. That's yeah. good because nutrition... Yeah. Nutrition plays the biggest role. It's a good 80% of us being healthy. And so when, mm -hmm. um, like going back to what you said, Joanne, about, you know, being, being so busy and just trying to figure out and find the time. When I start to work with someone who really has a time challenge, well, first of all, a lot of the workouts, as a matter of fact, many of the workouts we now offer within our suite of workouts are about 20 to 30 minutes. And so finding 20 to 30 mm -hmm. minutes you know, three, four days a week to get your body going is doable for anybody. I mean, if we're all being honest, we um, can prioritize and find that kind of time to move our bodies. And I think a lot of people have this misconception, you got to find an hour, two hours, this big block of time. And people say to me all the time, how many hours a day do you work out? And I will tell you that I don't work out hours a day. My husband will tell you, my son will tell you, I work out 20 to 30 minutes, six days a week. You come to my house and you can, you can witness it. Um, I'm not saying, oh my gosh, look at me, I'm perfect. I only work out this much. I'm just saying that people have this misconception that you have to block out several hours a day. The other thing is because I've worked out from home since 2008, I don't have to factor in drive time, locker room time, checking in at the front desk time. I don't, I'm not putting down a gym. Please don't misunderstand. I really am not. If people go to the gym and that works for them and they have that time and all of that is a beautiful thing and they're healthy, I say go for it. Do what works. But if you're struggling to find time to get to the gym, get the workout done, and here's the other thing about the gym. Again, remember, I ran one for two years. I can't tell you how many people I would watch walk in the door of the gym, check in at the front desk, go to the locker room, all that had to happen, and then wander around the gym floor because they didn't have any structure. They didn't know what they were going to do once they got there. They, they, or they were waiting in line for equipment because the gym was busy because it was after work or before work. And so all that factors into your workout time. For me, because I don't leave the house and I work out right here, my workout time is only the time that the workout is. So if my workout is 20 to 30 minutes, that's, that's all I have to block off as my workout time. I don't have to block off 15 minutes to drive to the gym, five minutes to find a parking spot, 10 minutes to the locker room, then, then the you know, half hour, hour workout, and then getting myself back home again. So you, you just want to factor all of that in when you make a decision of what's the best wellness program so that you know that you can make it work, you know, and you can fit it into your life. Um, the other thing too that I'm really adamant about when I start to work with people is what do you like to do, right? Do you like, sorry, you know when you're, you know when you get on the phone or you get on a video and your nose is itching because there's clearly 12 pounds of dog hair floating around this room with my beautiful dogs. Um, what do you like to do, right? Do you like to do yoga? Do you like to lift weights? Do you like to do kickboxing? Do you like to dance? Because why on earth am I, that's why I asked the question, when I have my questionnaire and my interview online, because why on earth am I going to align you with a high intensity weight training program when you don't like weight training, right? You might need the resistance training, but I can get you resistance training. And I'm just using this as an example. I can get you resistance training on your body, not lifting weights. And so it's a matter of aligning people with what they like to do. Cause guess what? We will do the workouts that we actually like, <laughs> but we won't do the ones or we're going to be really tempted to skip the ones that we just hate. Like we just hate it. We're like, that's not my favorite thing to do. So it's important to, that's why that interview is so important for me because it helps me to determine what's the plan of action here um, for this person so that they're going to make this happen and they're, and they're gonna do the work. Um, having also the accountability group um, not only do we have an accountability group 
uh, my whole fit family that's that's literally gathered together on this app on our phones but we now have a virtual gym which is kind of new i tried to do virtual gym a few years ago and not many people wanted to participate and now they are so now what we do is actually it's a zoom link just like the zoom link that you guys logged into here um and we we all just we, we we log in in the morning some people have already started their workout some people are done their workout um and we're not even doing the same workout some of us it but you know what it is so people are like well what's the point of it the point is just that we show up <laughs> we show up every morning together and some people arrive at five in the morning i get there about 6 30 but the the, the the virtual gym is open you know for an extended period of time and some people are on the west coast and some people are in canada and so you know sometimes you're in there and no one ever came in while you did your workout and sometimes there were four or five people and they're we're all working out at the same time so the, the virtual gym is again another piece of that accountability that showing up right and showing up and so even if you didn't do even if you don't do the virtual gym and you're just logging into the accountability group um i don't know how to explain it until you live it and breathe it but there's something about knowing that people are looking for your check-in I'm looking for your check-in <laughs> as your accountability partner and coach, but I also pair people up with an accountability buddy. And so that accountability buddy is looking for your check-in. And there's just something about knowing that someone's looking for your check-in that holds you accountable to do the work, to do the workout and to check in. And let me tell you something, myself included. Um, trust me when I tell you, especially as the coach, I need to set the example. So there's days where I don't feel like it, and there's days I missed my workout and I'll go into the group and say, man, struggle bus, <laughs> that didn't happen today, but I'll be back at it tomorrow, right? Whatever. But there, but there are also days where I don't feel like doing it, which doesn't happen very often because I've aligned myself with things I like to do. But when I don't feel like doing it and all of a sudden I hear my phone ping, 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 and it's all of my amazing fit family checking in. And I'm getting those notifications and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, they can do this. I can do this. Get your butt back there and do your workout. <laughs> um, but one of the things too that I've learned over the years is the earlier I get it done, the less likely that it's going to get missed, the less likely it's going to get interrupted. So I highly encourage you to embrace your miracle morning. And I have lots of resources um, and books. As a matter of fact, I'll just tell them to you right now while I'm talking about it. There's three amazing books that completely changed my morning. Listen, I ain't the morning girl. Never have been, but I am now. And that's weird coming out of my mouth because I hated early mornings. I fought it, fought it, fought it, fought it, fought it for so long. And then I started watching all of these amazing, wonderful coaches and friends of mine who were like crushing their mornings. Not only were they getting their workout done, but the, from a business perspective, they were they got more done before eight o'clock in the morning than most people get done in an eight hour day. And I was like, man, I have got to figure out this morning thing because I, I just love the energy that was coming out of these people. So there were three books recommended to me and there are three books that I read that completely changed everything for me. And I now, I, do, I work from home. I run my own business. There's nobody, I'm not click checking the time clock. I get up at 5.30 in the morning. I don't have to get up at 5.30 in the morning. I want to get up at 5.30 in the morning, right? And I don't shoot, jump out of bed. Trust me, the first two minutes suck. They just do. And you get over it. You figure it out. But what you realize is that after those two minutes are over, you're so glad you're up. You feel so good. It's oh, dark hundred, whatever. There's nobody up. It's so quiet outside. You can hear a pin drop. And there's something cool about that. So three books, if you have the ability to write these down, make sure that you get these. You can get them on Audible for an audio book and just listen to them on your drive to work or while you're brushing your teeth or while you're cooking dinner, um, or whatever you like to do. One is called The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Mel is a woman. Um, her name is Melanie and she goes by Mel Robbins, the five second rule and her concept, and she's got a lot more detail in the book, but her concept is that she wasn't a morning person either. And she needed to figure out how to do her mornings different. And one night she was up in the middle of the night, it was three o'clock in the morning and um, the space shuttle was taking off. And because what else is on at three o'clock in the morning? And she was watching the launch of the space shuttle and they said five, four, three, two, one, blast off. That's what they do when they shoot off the shuttle or a rocket, right? 
And all of a sudden she said, her brain just went, oh my gosh, that's it. That's how I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to three, I'm going to five, four, three, two, one, and I'm going to launch out of bed. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to hit the snooze button. I'm just going to get up. And so the whole book, she goes into the science behind it. She talks about REM sleep. You know, when we wake up, if we go back to sleep, our bodies go into a 90 minute REM cycle of deep, deep, deep sleep. So if you wake up and then hit the snooze button and 10 minutes later, your snooze, your alarm goes off again, you are now in a deeper sleep than you were the first time you woke up. Now it's even harder to get up. So we do this awful, weird, crazy cycle, myself included. I used to forever hit the snooze a million times. We do this to ourselves and beat ourselves up in the morning by not just getting up. So she talks about that and she gives you all the science behind it. The second book that I love is called Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, and he does like, if you're, if you're like a real black and white, you like the science and the numbers and the, all of the, proof and all that stuff. He's that kind of guy, which I love. He talks about um, habit, habit anchoring. So like if you anchor a new habit you're trying to adopt to one you already already do, um, you, can, you can attach it like an anchor. Then every time you do the intrinsic habit that you've already been doing, you'll remember, oh yeah, I also need to the new habit because it's attached to it. So let me give you an example. If while you brush your teeth and wash your face every morning, you're listening to a book, <laughs> your personal development for the day. Um, then every single time you grab your toothbrush, you're gonna to be like, oh yeah, where's my phone? So I can listen to my book while I'm getting myself together in the morning, right? It's called anchoring, habit anchoring. Um, and then the other, the third book is called Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, E-L-R-O-D. Three amazing books. Um, they revolutionized my morning for sure. And just solidified the new habit that I did. I saw a question um, on Instagram. Let me pull back. Oh, it's my friend Jay. She said, how has intermittent fasting worked for you? Okay. Um, my very, very, very good friend, Melissa McAllister, is an intermittent fasting or fasting, if you are, expert. I mean, legit. Like the girl has like lots of letters behind her name. She's done a gazillion, lots and lots of research. Um, and so I'm not the expert on intermittent fasting. I can tell you from my experience and I can tell you from what I've learned from her a little bit. So here's the deal. Um, let me first preface by saying that everyone's body is different. It's, it's the same in some ways, but it's different in some ways. Does that make sense? So the most important thing for you to do when you start a nutrition plan is we all know that there's two general lists of food. There's the foods that are deemed healthy foods, and then there's the list of foods that are not healthy foods. <laughs> and we probably would all be able to agree on the items that are in each of those lists. But just because something's on the healthy list, the healthy food list, doesn't mean it's healthy for your body and my body. We have to test our bodies. We have to see which of the foods on the healthy list does our body function best with? What does it like, right? And so not only do we have to figure out which of these healthy foods does our body function best with, but we also have to figure out when and how does our body want us to eat food throughout the day. So let me give you an example. I have gastroparesis. Gastroparesis is a um, digestive disorder where food stays in my stomach about 45 minutes longer than the average stomach. Because of that, really high fiber foods like broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, while they are literally at the top, top, top of the healthy food list, they are not healthy for my body. I can eat them in small doses and I can eat them on occasion. But because of the extreme high fiber count in content in those foods, and because they stay in my stomach longer than the average person, they blow up all that fiber starts to blow up in my stomach. Whereas you, if you ate all those foods, they would be probably down into your small intestine by the time that the fiber starts to expand. So you're not uncomfortable. I double over, you can send me to the ER. Like I had to leave parties, New Year's Eve parties. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. <laughs> and then I found out. 
But the point is that I had to find out through this testing what my body likes and how it functioned at its best. So I have to kind of cross those off and just eat them a little bit, right? A little bit and on occasion. The other thing is when and what time of day does my body want me to eat food? So going back to your question about intermittent fasting. So some of you might be like, what is that? Intermittent fasting, first of all, the word fasting scares people because they're like, fasting, that means you starve to death. No, you don't have to. There's lots of different levels of fasting. For those of you who go to my church, to Bayside or any church for that matter, um, you may go through a fasting period at the beginning of the year, and maybe you've heard of Daniel fast, um, which is actually biblical, but there's lots of different fasting. So there's the kind of fasting where you don't eat any food at all and you don't drink water. You don't take anything into your body. Then there's water only fasting. And then some people do it for 24 hours, some people do it for 48 hours, some people do it for three days, some people do it for a month. There's all different levels, right, of fasting. Oh my God, it says I have two minutes left on Instagram. Oh well, I guess you'll get cut off after you hear the rest. But anyway, intermittent fasting is where you basically eat all of your food in a window, a window each day. Most people will eat in an eight hour window, which means that your body is fasting the other 16 hours. Okay, and what that does is it allows your body to completely digest all of that food that you ate in the eight hour window and start itself over again. And a lot of people find that that works really well for their body. Okay, I do practice intermittent fasting. I have my first meal at 12 o'clock noon and my last at eight o'clock at night. That's my eight hour window. Some people like 11 to seven, some people like 10 to six. Everybody chooses a different window, if you will, to eat their food in. Um, it's not for everyone, and it's not a, you have to do this in order to be a healthy human. You should test your body and see if it works best for you. So I hope that answered your question, Jay. But yes, intermittent fasting. A lot of people um, are finding that it works really well for their bodies. So there's that. Um, I don't see any other questions. If you have questions on Zoom, just pop them in the chat. The only thing I want to leave you with, because we are running out of time, and I do want to respect your time. Again, we talked about the habits. I think that's really important for you to understand that you know everything is about a choice and a habit. And, and while it seems scary to build a new habit, just know and, and just feel rest assured that if you do it long enough, it will become habitual. You know that, right? Good things and bad things, good habits and bad habits. Uh, and so at first it seems painful, especially like the morning, getting up to do your, your, your workouts in the morning, making healthy food choices, avoiding the temptations that are out there. Um, don't put yourself in line with temptation with anything in life, truly. Why would you do that? That's painful, right? I'm going to lose Instagram. That's okay. Bye-bye, Instagram. Um, and then when it comes to building a habit, be patient. Be patient. Be patient with your body. Be patient with yourself. Have hope that that will build, that habit will build. Um, I went live earlier today and we were talking, somebody asked me about patients with um, you know, wanting to reach their goals and it wasn't happening fast enough. And I wanna give you three pieces of advice, the same piece of advice I gave earlier today, but I'll repeat them again. The first thing is you have to get healthy between the ears before, before our bodies are ever going to respond to anything, right? And so what do I mean by getting healthy between the ears? I mean, it's our mindset. You have to believe that you can make changes, um, you will make changes, and you're going to be successful at this, right? You, you're, you're strong enough to do the workouts. You may stumble at the beginning. You're going to have to modify a whole bunch. Everything is going to be new to you, but you are going to figure it out, and you're going to progressively get better. You have to believe that. And so how do we get healthy between the ears? How do we change our mindset that this is important to me, this is what I want to do, and I can do this? You know, I may have spent... You may have spent 40, 50, 60 years of your life living it one way and you're getting ready to completely make a change and you may be thinking, OMG, like how in the world am I going to change my habits? I'm so set in my ways. I get it. I mean, I'm 48. I'm not, you know, maybe I haven't lived as long as you have or maybe I have lived longer than you. But the point is that Anyone can do anything if you want it bad enough. It's really what it boils down to. So getting healthy between the ears is working on our mindset. And how do we do that? Well, we already talked about one way, and that's personal development. And that's, what's, what's personal development, Mary? I'm not crazy. I'm not Linda, what was her name? Linda Blair, where her head spun around, exorcist. I know you're not crazy like that. But you don't have to be crazy 
to, to embrace personal development. And, and personal development is anything that is positive, that is either a book or a podcast or a YouTube channel or um, a, a message from your church from, from the past that you want to listen to again. Um, it's a, you can, you can physically open a book, like a real book like this <laughs> and read, um, you know, for 10 minutes a day, but it's 10 minutes a day of you, um, pouring into your head, something positive. Right. And so again, you can do it while you're brushing your teeth. You don't have to find an extra 10 minutes. You're just going to anchor it on to something you already do. You can listen while you brush your teeth. That's what I do in the morning, put my makeup on, get myself ready for the day. I got a book going. I got a book going. I'm cooking dinner. I got a book going, the audio book, right? If I'm driving in the car, I got a book going. So you're, you're feeding your head. You're feeding your mind with positivity. That's one way that you can be patient with yourself through a process when you, we want everything yesterday, right? It's not going to happen. The other thing is make sure you're measuring your progress because one of the things that happens is we tend to think that we're not making progress and we're really frustrated because we didn't lose 10 pounds in 24 hours. <laughs> but I guarantee you if, you, if you measure your body with a measuring device and you're not just reliant on the scale, by the end of the very first week of making healthy changes, you probably lost inch, inches on your body. And, and you, may not have, you may not have lost weight and you may have gained weight, but you're losing inches. So it doesn't matter. Your if your goal is to lose weight and you want to be a smaller human, you're losing inches and you're gaining weight. Who cares? You're losing inches. You're becoming a smaller human. And so, if you see that progress, that fuels you, right? That pumps you up. That fuels you, and you're like, okay, this is good. Um, I'm moving in the right direction. And I will tell you this: when you see lack of progress, it fuels you sometimes too. So maybe a week in and you realize I wasn't doing the right things. I wasn't making the right choices. And look, I've actually put more weight on and inches on my body. And now that fuels you because you're mad at yourself because you didn't do the right thing. So measuring progress is really, really important. 99.9% .9 of the time we have made positive progression and we're not noticing it. So you've got to measure your progress, look at it and celebrate it and let it fuel you to keep on going. Right. And then the third thing um, with making sure you're patient is surrounding yourself with other people who are working towards a goal. When you're around other people who are trying to reach a goal uh, and they're trying to do really good, they fuel you and you fuel them because they're they're not just sitting on a couch and eating bonbons. They are making right choices, making healthy choices. They're putting the work in, they're working hard. And therefore you are going to be more apt to do the same. You're going to, you're going to encourage and inspire them. They're going to encourage and inspire you. So that's really important as you work to instill new habits is that you're patient through that process, but that you do these things that will help you to be more patient. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. Um, I am going to, going to go ahead and shut us down here. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you think of questions that you didn't ask me while we were here on this call together, just DM me, direct message me, email me, um, wh whatever you'd like so that I can get them answered and, uh, and I can help you as best that I can. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate you following me on social media. I hope that I impact your life in a positive way. Um, I am, I do have this recorded, so I'll post the recording. And feel free to share it with friends or anyone else you think that this would be helpful for. And I will see you guys the next time I come on. Thanks for being here. Bye.